The preparation. How did Nigeria get it wrong? Ten athletes declared ineligible to compete. The basketball team jersey is also coming late. Contingents appearing in discordant clothing. And our football team's missing in action. Plus the controversy over the deal with Puma. The wins and losses. Blessing Okagwari failing doping test. Divine Oduduru making a false start in 100 meters. A close medal in the women's hurdle before a bronze in long jump and silver in wrestling. And what about the future? How do we avoid the repeat of an unpleasant situation in the coming Olympic Games? Sit back as we take you through Nigeria's Tokyo 2020 experience. We'll say good morning and welcome. Thanks for joining us on a Friday morning on The Breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. It's our Olympic special and our conversations today are going to be going all and around the Olympic Games on hand, uh, how Nigeria has fared. I am Osaogi Ogbawa. And I am Aneta Felix. Now, we know that um, the Olympic Games will end in two days, and it's the moment Nigeria sits in its 71st position out of 81 countries and the committee taking part. We have a silver and a bronze, thanks to S.A. Brume and Blessing Oburududu. Brume won a bronze medal in long jump. Oburududu um, won uh, silver in women's wrestling. Both athletes have been rewarded with $7,500 and $10,000 for their feats. Okay, so we're back to the um, promises here, but it seems that this time around they, they received their prize money. Um, good thing. We've, this is something we've talked about um, time and time again, about athletes you know, doing well for the country, and then receiving gifts that they never, they never get. Yeah, we remember the coach that took Nigeria to World Cup um, Olympics victory in 1996. Um, he basically went on to complain about just how much he was promised uh, Bonfred Joe. He was the uh, former assistant technical advisor of the Super Eagles, said he was promised the medal. He was about to go up stage to receive the medal, but he told him the medal wasn't ready, so he never got that. He was promised a piece of land in Nigeria. He never got that. You know, in an interview he granted um, to Nigerian media in 2020, he was, you know, went on explaining all these things and that out of anger, he didn't return to Nigeria. He simply went back to his own country. But seems that the Nigerian government has learned from their mistakes as you know, they have both received um, $7,500 and $10,000 respectively for winning that uh, bronze and silver. Um, yeah, you know, so congratulations to them once again. You know, we're at least better than 10 teams that have uh, gone to the Olympics, 71 out of 81. Mm, not bad. There's still not, sorry, nine other teams somewhere uh, behind us. Hopefully that doesn't change in the next uh, two days. Um, you know, about their prize. You know, you, you, like, you, well, you've said, you know, Nigeria has learned from their, you know, mistakes in the past and, you know, has uh, gone ahead to give them their, you know, uh, cash gifts, which yeah, I will, you know, of course, commend them, you know, but there's so many other aspects, you know, with regards to the Olympic Games that we obviously haven't learned anything uh, for them. And that is mostly organization and preparation for these games. Um, we finally got a bronze and a silver. Congratulations to us. Yay. But... Um, it is expected, you know, and th these aren't things that we should praise the Nigerian government for, for fulfilling its promise and, you know, giving cash uh, gifts to the athletes. Um, it is expected that you should do so. It's pretty much the same with praising a governor for fixing a streetlight. So, you know, it is expected as a part of the, you know, the process, you know, I'm not going to clap for them for going ahead and do it, doing it. Um, maybe, yes, we'll have this reaction because of past experiences of other athletes uh, um, from the past. Of course, you just mentioned Bonfrey Joe. Um, we've also spoken here about how the Super Eagles coach has complained about being old salary for months and all of that. So there is that. But, you know, once again, it makes me um, go back to what I was saying initially. That is a sad place that we are with our sports. That we, don't, we haven't gone to a place where the cash gifts from government aren't necessarily the you know, only prize to win when you compete at the Olympics. We've not been able to get that level of brand sponsorship that makes athletes know that once they win gold or they win silver, um, they will have very, very beautiful endorsements and they will have, um, you know, the next couple of years, you know, signed to some brand or the other. Might be a sporting brand, may not be a sporting brand, but that level of, you know, attention to sports. And we're not there yet. I don't think uh, Shikari Richardson 
or the U.S. Uh, basketball team, or any of the you know athletes in the U.S. you know is going there to compete and hoping that the government would fulfill their ten thousand dollars promise to each athlete, you know who wins um, you know um, um, a medal at the Olympics. Um, I'm sure you know, maybe those things will happen, but most importantly is you know the possibility of endorsements from very very big brands um, across the United States or any other country. Um, we've not gotten there yet, and that's you know the part that you know I'm not very excited about. The, that's where we should be, and that's where I hope that we will get to. Same thing with our football, and you know, and the attention that we should place with you know local football here, the Aimbas and the Cano Pillars, and and you know the um, you know, all of them. You know, there should be some level of attention that it gets to make these players not necessarily rely only on club salary, but they have, um, you know, some level of endorsement that they will get because they won the Champions League or they won the Nigerian Professional League, um, you know, and all of that. So, um, we will have more extensive conversations this morning about preparations, um, how we have fared so far at the Olympics, what we could have done different, and in what ways can we improve moving to the next Olympics. Um, we, this is maybe the first Olympics in a very, very long time that we didn't even get any of the football teams to play in, which is really rare. You know, and um, and um, unusual, you know, to be honest. But this is where we are. We'll see how it goes from here. And moving on, a non-profit organization is using its verified Instagram handle to advise future Nigerian athletes to form the Niger Olympic Committee. This is to avoid relying on the Nigerian government and the kind of embarrassing situation suffered in Tokyo. One of the saddest moments for the country was when the 20 athletes were disqualified for failing to meet minimum testing requirements, and half of them were Nigerians. Uh, we remember one of the most shocking of them. It's a uh, blessing. Um, so much hope in her about, you know, just how much she had prepared and how she was ready to, you know, bring home the crown for Nigeria. And when we heard that uh, Okaberi had been suspended uh, from Olympics, she had failed to meet up with the athletics in integrity unit. Um, um, the base, the suspend, the what's it called now? The tests that were done. So basically, that that really put a put a spin on the whole thing, and it made it made Nigerians very disappointed in that fact. And uh, it, questions really that we want to ask regarding why these tests were not done. Why why didn't we discover this? Still part of the preparation um, talks that we're having. We're supposed to have done those tests, weren't we? Because imagine putting in all that effort, all that hard work, only to go there to, to, to be embarrassed, so to speak. It really didn't seem pleasing. Yeah. Um, so first, Okagbari wasn't uh, part of the 10 that were you know, announced as disqualified for failing to do the out-of-competition tests. Um, she was, I think it was the drug test that was carried out during the games that, you know, she failed. Yes. Um, you know, with that, and I think, you know, most of the people who responded to that, you know, said that, you know, from her career and from, you know, the, the times and the years that she put into athletics, uh, she had a very, very clean career. So this was maybe just an, you know, innocent mistake that she made, something that she must have consumed, you know, during the games or prior to the games, you know, that must have led to this. So. Um, there is that, you know, and, um, um, you know, the 10, you know, that were disqualified, um, that eventually, of course, there was a protest, you know, somewhere in Tokyo, Nigerian athletes who were, you know, protesting against the mismanagement, basically, of the whole Olympics um, um, uh, Games. Um, you know, you would obvi obviously feel sorry for them. I saw an interview where Solomon Dalong, the former Minister of Sports, you know, was speaking and saying that they had led, you know, they had put all, the, all these things on ground to ensure that there was proper testing, you know, before the Games and, you know, with the constitution of the Olympics and with the laws and rules and regulations guarding the Olympics. Um, but, you know, after he left, you know, according to him, after he left, you know, some of all those things were discarded. And, um, you know, there, there was, you know, not, there wasn't proper management of these processes before the Olympic Games. And that's why, you know, things played out like that. You cannot blame the athletes. Um, you cannot, you know, you know, not speak about the organization, the Nigerian Olympics, the Nigerian Sports Ministry, the Athletic Federation of Nigeria. They, you know, are 100 percent, you know, to blame here. Um, because they, of course, are the ones who are meant to make sure that these rules are followed. If any athlete, you know, does not comply with the rules and regulations with regards to testing before the Games, then they shouldn't have been sent there, you know, in the first place. But for the Athletic Federation and Nigeria Sports Ministry to have sent these athletes there, it means that they, you know, have done their part or they, as they assume that they have done their part with regards to testing before the Games, the out-of-competition tests that should have carried out. But they didn't, obviously, and that's why these things uh, turn out this way. It's really just a you know thing with management, you know, and and proper organization. 
And the fact that, you know, once again in Nigeria, which we've said multiple times, is that nobody really gets to answer for these failures and these lapses. You know, we never really would get to see a place where um, somebody is going to be, you know, take blame for the failure of the Nigerian Olympics team um, to compete you know, among their peers, to actually go there and give a good show, to not go there and, you know, be, you know bring back these embarrassing stories where people are protesting in Tokyo. This is, I, I don't remember, you know, any time that I've seen the, a group of Nigerian athletes protesting in the Olympic Games or any, in any um, sports. I remember one time that, you know, they couldn't book hotels, they couldn't book a flight, that, you know, there's a rumor that Mikel Obi had to, um, you know, pay for their pay flights for, and some yes. of all of that. So, um, it's really just a failure of management and the whole organization with regards to Nigeria sports. And that's where we, where, we are, where we are today. Sunday Diary, you know, for the longest time, you know, even prior to the Olympics, has had a lot of questions that needed to be answered. Um, and um, is he going to be answering those questions? Are they going to be hard questions asked to the Minister of Sports, uh, you know, with regards to what happened to the Nigerian Olympic team? Where do we go from here? Where did this, you know, in what ways did we fall short? And whose responsibility was it to ensure that these things um, were done? Simply proper management is where we, we, we missed out completely on. And so definitely there should be questions asked. It's sad, really, really sad. Anyway, um, you already also know about Puma's uh, termination of its uh, deal with the Athletics Federation of Nigeria over an ongoing feud between the sports ministry and the Athletics Federation of Nigeria. You know, once again, another very embarrassing um, you know, incident that occurred with uh, the Olympics um, 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 show. We went there, you know, I remember that you spoke about this, or we spoke about this here when we're celebrating uh, the um, uh, locally made sports Africa kit. For yeah, Africa for Africa sports, you know, gear for the um, athletes. Um, and that was, you know, was put on camera, was put on TV. They came to take pictures, they danced and they drank and they celebrated completely you know, ignoring the fact that they had signed a deal with Puma. There's news reports this morning, I think it was on Punch, I saw it, that Puma will sue the Athletics Federation of Nigeria and Nigeria's Ministry of Sports for terminating, uh, terminating their contract or for, you know, breaching the contract that they signed. The contract was signed in 2019, was meant to run till 2022, and part of the agreement was that they would wear Puma to the um, Olympics. They already had, you know, cash, um, I said, I think I mentioned this yesterday, that it was also meant to be $15,000 for gold, gold medalists. You're also supposed to get 5000 um, for bronze. 3,500 for people who win um, 5,000 for silver, for silver yeah. and 3,500 for bronze. All these things were properly laid out. It was meant to be a non-disclosure agreement. You know, documents were signed. It was a $2.7 million, I believe, um, agreement that was signed back then. But because of internal feud and, you know, tussle between two people or two separate, you know, factions in this same um, ministry, or uh, you know, between the Ministry of Sports and the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, that's where all of this went. See, you know, when I take a look drain. at situations like this in Nigeria, it just goes on to show the level of um, lack of communication and lack of a relationship between government agencies. Why should an athletic federation of a country and the sports ministry not be working hand in hand? I mean, that's how it's supposed to work, right? But in a situation like this, the Athletics um, Federation of Nigeria, its president and vice, you know, came out to say that they had been commissioned by the federal government to go out and look for sponsors. I mean, we're talking about how it is sponsors that should be funding this. It's sponsors that should be providing the cash prizes, the kits, and all of that. So AFN went out to consult another group, another athletics or sports sports body. They struck this deal with Puma in 2019. Everything seemed to be laid out. You know, the fact that they were going to get their kits, um, about 40 different items in those kits. So we didn't need a situation. We didn't need to have a situation where a Nigerian athlete would be washing his jerseys online on TikTok, putting it out, and then having to delete it after seeing you know the backlash and all of that from that so the sad thing is remember when you know puma uh, signed this deal with nigeria the afn and uh, um, sunday diary came on board then it now became a situation of how did you get this deal signed they involved the dss saying that the athletics federation of nigeria ibrahim Gusso um, might have done some shady dealing the dss did their investigation and found that, that this was a valid contract and that no, no money was paid to anyone. You mentioned yesterday that what if money was paid. The DSS declared this was in 2019 that no money was paid to anyone. This was a valid contract. So it makes you want to ask, why would the 
you know, sports ministry between the Athletics Federation of Nigeria's president and vice for going ahead to look for sponsors. I mean, we have these sponsors. So everything that should be done to make sure that our sports team at the Olympics is well represented and that Nigeria is a giant of Africa like we claim to be. I mean, it really, it really is scary. Bonfre put out a statement last, last year, exactly, like I said, that Nigeria you know, is no longer one of the top footballing countries in the world. We really have gone down the drain. And uh, conversations still remain to see if we can rise again. Well, he's mentioned the world. You should be mentioned in Africa, to be honest. Um, but these are conversations that we'll get into um, in the course of the program this morning. We have a you know, very, very interesting um, lineup of guests that will look into these issues. They look at the Puma, you know, issue of preparation, you know, and our wins and losses and all of that um, all through the program this morning. So stay with us. Coming up next, we have G. Day Johnson joining us with Off the Press. Let's look at uh, the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. Welcome once again.